Morning, good afternoon, depending on where you're joining us from. We are here today with the fine folks from Ignite. We've got Philip Townsend and Tim Schwebs. Is is that is that correct? Did I pronounce that right? Yeah, it's close enough. Okay, good. And <laughs> we all know Mr. Eric Anthony. Uh, so, Eric, why don't you tell us a little bit about Ignite? Yeah, so uh, Ignite was founded 13, 14 years ago, roughly those numbers. Um, so they've been around for quite a while. Started out as a file, you know, cloud file sharing collaboration type of solution. And then we've slowly moved into more of this secure and govern space as well. Now, when I talk to MSP partners about Ignite, I'm primarily telling three sets of stories. I'm talking about how to move your file server to the cloud, you know, how to get rid of that on-premise file server, move it to the cloud, but retain the experience of a map drive letter and NTFS style permissions, right? Nice. So your users really don't see a difference. I mean, we've you know had a lot of stories around this and I think uh, Philip's gonna get into it a little bit later um, about how that transition can actually work uh, real easily. Uh, so that's one of them, right? All of the capabilities of moving to the cloud, getting rid of that on-premise server, no longer having that five to seven year refresh or, or upgrades because you're running out of hard drive space. It's all just there and available and, and secure. Second part of that is all of the abilities that you get with Ignite in terms of being able to share and collaborate outside of your organization. Um, you no longer have to send file attachments because everything's a link, right? And you have control over those links. And we're going to show you that in the demo as well. So a lot of things that really keep the experience of that on-premise file server the same, but allow you the extra security and the capabilities of being in the cloud. Nice. Now the second, sorry. No, I was just, I was just saying that was nice. Um, the second story is around security and governance, right? Because we know, we all know, I mean, I don't have to harp on it here, how important security is today, but uh, being able to know that that data is safe and secure and that if you have any compliance requirements around that data, that you are fulfilling those requirements for your clients. And so Ignite does a lot around that. And that kind of even segues me into the third story that I like to tell, and that's around verticals. Because anytime you where you have complex data situations, you need solutions that can cater to those. So on the security and compliance side, one of the unique industries that we really serve well is life sciences because of all the regulations that you have around that, you know, developing new pharmaceuticals, diagnostic medical devices, things like that, where you have to have a certain chain of custody of the data and it all has to be very regulated. But then you get into some more traditional uh, industries like construction, right? Where you have a unique situation where you have a lot of collaborators, you frequently have very large files like CAD drawings, and they very frequently have remote offices that are in the middle of nowhere because they're building a building or whatever. And so their bandwidth is terrible. And so Ignite has unique solutions that can compensate and fulfill uh, those requirements or those needs. So a lot of cool things going on. And then of course, uh, and, and if I have time later, because I don't want to take time away from Philip, because this is really supposed to be a demo. Um, if we have time later, I'll talk about the partner program and what we've done just in the last two years to really start being able to work with MSPs and address that side of the market. That's perfect. So, and the Ignite, correct me if I'm wrong, Ignite is a 100% cloud-based solution. Correct. Okay, excellent. Well, um, so I, I'm excited to, to dive deep in. Awesome. So, uh, I mean, Scott, is do we want to just go ahead and dive into the demo and then we can, if sure. we have time later, we can do Q&A, stuff like that? Absolutely. Awesome. Well, with that, I'll hand it off to Philip. Cool. Thanks, guys. Let me get my desktop shared. Can you guys see my desktop? We can. Yep. Great. <clears throat> so Ignite, the, the everyday user experience, I want to show that, and then I'll jump in and show a little bit of the everyday admin experience, just so you get a good feel of what using Ignite is like. And for the users, 
using Ignite is almost identical to the environment they would be used to coming from a standard kind of Windows file server environment, like Eric said, with a mapped drive. So I've got my demo environment logged in here. The username is uh, Louise Finance to help me remember what department she's in. I've got a U drive mapped to her private folder so she can uh, store her personal content there. I've got an S drive mapped to the kind of corporate share. And this is a content that she has permission to see. She's in the finance department. So there's a finance folder there. And I've mapped that to the F drive just to save her a few clicks in her imaginary day. <clears throat> Louise's typical workflow is gonna be to drill down into the file structure, maybe find a file that she needs to update, this draft summary. <clears throat> She'll open it, make a change. It's the 20th, not the 22nd. Hit save uh, and close it. And for Louise using Ignite, that's it. She doesn't have to manage sync. She doesn't have to worry about that content or where it is or do people have access to the most current version because Ignite is cloud first. This change is saved to the cloud. And she may not even know that she's using a cloud-based file system because of how familiar this uh, user interface is. Yeah, and that's, you know, one of the things that really interested me when I first came on board here at Ignite, and I got to speak to one of the very first partners that I was uh, working with, was the fact that they actually sent the employees of a client home on a Friday afternoon, just like they normally would, and the MSP got to work, migrated the data, and set up Ignite on all of the workstations. And when those employees came back in on Monday morning, they had no idea that they were using Ignite because they were using the exact same drive letter that they used when they left. And, and that's, you know, that's what I think, and that kind of embodies what I think is unique about Ignite in terms of the end user experience and making it so super simple. <laughs> you know, Eric, that is not exactly how I would probably have done it in my <laughs> MSP days. <laughs> <laughs> but I am super grateful to the to the the admin that had the guts to do that. And really the user experience is so similar. I see how that's totally possible. And so I'm I'm glad he did that so that we we have that example. <laughs> well, and and to be clear, we have ways of doing it in more of a staged process so that you're not just, you know, there's a way where you can migrate some of the data and and you know check one user and have them try it out make sure it's working properly so that you're not doing such a cold uh, cut over, you know, on a weekend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'll talk a little bit about migration too, as we go through. So I want to walk through that simple user workflow again, but highlight some of what Ignite is doing in the background, because it really seems like there's nothing going on or nothing special here. But uh, the special thing is that this is a completely cloud-based file system. So the Ignite desktop app is a lightweight agent that we can configure with a script or a GPO. It's an MSI. That is creating these desktop drives with the labels. And then when a user opens up a document, so I'll just go back to that same document uh, draft summary. User opens it up. It's pulling it down from the cloud, caching it locally, and then allowing them to edit that document. It's also locking the document, and I'll show you that in just a second, but uh, globally or in the cloud, this document is locked right now, even though I opened it from a local mapped drive. I'm gonna make another change and hit save. Ignite saves a new version of each file every time a save or write is detected. So that didn't overwrite the previous file and I'll show that as well. And let me jump into the web UI and we'll look at uh, file locking and version control. So I'm assuming, uh, I'm assuming if it, if it uh, up, uploads a new uh, copy each time, then you could go back and restore those copies or can you revert back to those copies using that platform, that same platform? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And it's, uh, it's accessible both to the admin and the users. That really takes some of the load off of help desk. 
when users, nice. if they made a change, they hit save. They're like, I need it from yesterday or I need it from Friday when I remembered what I was doing. Uh, they can come in and do that and I'll show that. That also uh, highlights, you know, I changed one character. And so the sync that happened when I hit save on this is probably a four or five kilobyte document, but I changed one byte, for instance, it syncs one byte. It has, it does delta syncing. So if you changed, if you had a five gig PDF and you changed one character, it's gonna upload just the, the delta that changed there. So let's nice. jump into the web UI. This is the web UI. I'm logged in as Louis Finance. It's still mirroring that Windows file server experience with our uh, directory tree on the left, content in the middle. And then you can see this draft summary document. And I didn't close it this time, so it's still open, which means that there's still a lock icon on that file. If another user were to open this either through web or mobile or local, they would get uh, this file is in use because that file locking is cloud-based, not SIFS-based or server-based. So it really eliminates a lot of that uh, conflicts and confusion and rework from people editing different branches of a file's history. So that uh, you can see that there and admins can come in and unlock this. And then just to the left of that, there's a versions icon. I can click on this and this is exactly what you were talking about, Scott. This is the version history. And you can see there's the, the first time I ran through, it's 104, I hit save again at 107. And I can see if multiple people were editing this, I could see their, who had made what change at what time. I can interact with each of these versions, downloading, there's a copy version ID for audit that we'll talk about later. I can delete versions that I know are not relevant or uh, I can make one current. So if, I, if there was a, a formatting error back here or a, a formula error somewhere, I can go back and make this current. It moves it to the top and preserves all of the rest of the version history. So that is version control. Very, very so, nicely laid out as well. It's very, very simple to understand. And, and Philip, you could also yeah. use that in the case of, say, ransomware, right? So if a file gets encrypted, you can go and roll back any of those previous versions. Yes, yes, that's, that's exactly right, Eric. Uh, remediating ransomware in Ignite is extremely simple uh, compared to like a Windows file server environment or on-prem where you're having to either go to the backup solution and pull the file out, and now you're using multiple tools or you're doing tapes, God forbid, um, or even if you just have like a VMware snapshot from even hourly best case, then you're still using multiple tools to get that content back and potential user impact. With Ignite for single files or for a few files, we can come in and just hit the make current and then delete the encrypted version. Or if it's a little bit more widespread, then you can do a support ticket and we can help you roll back all of the changes made in a certain time period. And so remediating ransomware, we've never had a client pay a ransom because there's just no need. We can just roll back to the, the unencrypted version. And so that's, I, I have more on ransomware and like detecting it and uh, how we detect it and stuff like that, that I will discuss a little bit later. We'll go into that more when we get to the, governance side, uh, but really all of the, all the data is in one place. It's cloud first and you can access it a variety of ways, either through the web UI or the mapped drive letter. We have Android and iOS apps that are, are very intuitive, like you said, Scott, and easy to use. We also have integrations with Office. It can get right to Ignite from here and save right to Ignite with Outlook, and I'll, I'll demo more of the Outlook integration, but uh, here's, the, here's the integration loaded in Outlook, and Teams, and uh, non-Microsoft integrations as well with G Suite. One of the very popular ones is eSignature. 
So we can use the DocuSign workflow where you send it out. We can do that with Ignite. And when it comes back, it will come back through Ignite. So we have a, a very good integration with some of the eSig providers. And then also, like Eric said, some of the, the complex use cases with verticals. So I'm going to come into apps and integrations. And do external integration. So a lot of the programs that your clients will be using uh, for construction, like AutoCAD, are already in our library. And it's growing every day. And we can filter by industry, Bluebeam, Rover, uh, integrations like that. So that is our, that's kind of how, how do clients access the data and they can get it from anywhere, any device, anytime. And I should just mention, I'm not running a VPN client here. So the, the desktop app provides the security for that mapped drive letter. And I don't have to have a VPN to have a mapped drive letter. And that was kind of a paradigm changer for me when I first got into Ignite. So, wow, that's nice. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a big one. So we've covered kind of how do, how do they get to their content? How do they use it? Um, they're also going to want to share that out and collaborate with external parties. So we have sharing kind of built in everywhere in the Windows file uh, server context menu or uh, Windows file explorer, right click context menu. We can share there, copy link, default options. Of course, you can share from the web UI and then also just directly from email if you know you want to send someone a file and maybe it's 200 megabytes or five gigabytes. Uh, Ignite is very, Ignite just, it doesn't ignore file sizes, but it is great for, for really big files, especially with CAD and Adobe type of uh, file sharing. But you can come in to Outlook and find your file, click OK. I have the default link sharing settings configured to require a password. So the plugin is giving me that password here. And then there's the link. And again, we're sharing with link sharing in general, you're sharing access to the content and not the content itself. This is great for exchange servers everywhere that aren't storing all of those attachments. It's great for cybersecurity engineers everywhere because they don't have your content just floating around in email servers all over the internet. And it gives you that ability to cut off access to the file at any time because we're able to control those links. And Ignite's link sharing is similar to what other cloud storage providers are probably offering today. But one of the main differences is that we, 14 years ago when we started, we were building a business use case. This, we didn't ever have a consumer product that we're adapting to a business use case or we're not taking a, a, like a different product and trying to add on like a acquisition of a consumer use case. We've been business to business from the very beginning so that our features are, are very geared towards that. So let me show the link sharing options that I talked about. And I have this folder restricted for link sharing. So and the end users folder. can manage the permissions for the share, right? Yes, end users can manage their links as well. Okay. And yeah, that is what we're going to look at. So. This is the kind of like you said, permissions for the share. I can have a public link that anyone can access. I can add a password. I can keep it internal and make sure that the link doesn't get out or even internally to a specific email address. A lot of flexibility there. I can change that password, have it expire on a date or after a number of clicks. And then I'll just click get link and I have that link there and I can send that out. We can also add a commentary and let's see. 
So we can add comments to files in the web UI. This helps kind of collaboration, especially like internally or with external parties. We can say at, at Jessica Clark, please review this document. And then if I wanted to track that request, I could turn it into a workflow. We can support multi-step workflows, like review and approve. And I can have one person review it, another approve it. Um, and then we can also add metadata. And I'll, we see this a lot in construction or even some financial services where they have unique client IDs or project IDs. You can create that on the back end and have it uh, attached to each file. And then you can search by that, retain by that. And uh, everything I'm doing here in the web UI can also be done through APIs. We have a very uh, robust API and we're building the community around that. So this is really the, the way that clients, we've covered how they access it and how they share the content here. Let's see. So let me switch over to the admin interface now. Back out of that. We have 2FA single sign-on and a, a pretty robust authentication offering with Ignite. And I'll talk more about that again here in a second. So with the user experience, you know, everything is, we have a single source of truth for all of their content and they're able to share it from anywhere in the platform. And we try to be invisible, invisible and intuitive, uh, depending on what UI they're using. But that's the user experience. The, the admin experience has some different implications because we're switching from on-prem, high-touch infrastructure to a software as a service model. And that has big implications for MSP support resources. So there are lots of things that change. But one of the things that stays the same that Eric mentioned that I think IT admins like is NTFS permissions. So Ignite was designed to work with and to integrate with NTFS-like permissions at the folder level. So if I come in to the clients and say, manage folder permissions, now let me go one down. Get a little bit more variety on that. Oops. And it's folder permissions. We can set view, editor, full, and owner. This is kind of like read, write, delete, and permissions management. So very, very NTFS-like. And we can also break permissions inheritance. So the permissions will be waterfall until we uncheck this permissions inheritance. And this will be a, a UI that a lot of server admins will be familiar with. Do you want to remove them or copy them? And I almost could tell you that the Windows equivalent of that <laughs> from seeing it so many times. Uh, and because Permissions can be a real gotcha anytime you're moving data from one platform to another. And since Ignite's business to business, and this is designed to be a, a file server replacement, when we migrate into Ignite, if we're doing a client onboarding, we can translate the NTFS permissions into Ignite. And that's a, a, huge, a huge uplift anytime we're doing that uh, or bringing a bunch of content in because people have very complex permissions. We also have, uh, let me highlight a couple other admin settings here. So MSPs typically have a, a fixed rate plan, gold, silver, bronze. And one of the, the changes when you're managing on-prem servers and cloud storage and SharePoint, where when you switch to Ignite, it means that you don't have to do that anymore. All of that time that you were spending um, digging into SharePoint site collections 
or impersonating personal accounts for someone who left, or maybe managing you know, between on-prem, cloud, OneDrive, Teams. There's just kind of data silos everywhere. That data sprawl is crazy. So providers are able to spend a lot more time. And when I was in MSP world, I did a, I was a VCIO for a while. That was my favorite role. And uh, so I think providers are able to spend a lot more time doing higher altitude, more strategic engagement with the clients. And yeah. then, yeah. So Philip, I would just kind of say that because of, you know, you're, you're not having to support a VPN anymore. You're not having to support the on-prem file server anymore. And generally speaking, um, the administration duties inside of Ignite are so much easier than, than all of that day-to-day -day stuff that you used to have to do with a file server that it gains a lot of the time back so that you, know, you can actually have your techs or your engineers or whoever focus more on the activities that Philip was just mentioning. And you know, we all understand being a managed service provider, that's where you want to level up your services to, right? You don't want to spend your time on the mundane stuff. That's the stuff that you want to automate, make more efficient, all those stuff, you know, the things I've talked about for years so that you can get to those higher level services that actually bring in uh, more business to the MSP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and some MSPs, We'll use that time to hunt and get new clients, or some MSPs will use it to farm and, and raise the services that they that they provide to their clients. Ignite does really well with both of those. Either, either you're super efficient or you've got these expanded content and governance offerings for the clients. So this is the admin interface here. And as you can see, deploying a new client, configuring, administering Ignite is really just toggles and checkboxes, a couple of options. It's very easy, very low, uh, low overhead on the admin side. I've got the sharing controls here where you can control the permissions that Scott mentioned. One of the things I'd recommend is don't, uh, don't allow the public no password link type for users. And uh, another area I talked about a little bit, but I'll show. Uh, password controls. I was in cybersecurity and, and server administration at a bank. So this really resonated with me. We've got robust password controls in Ignite. We also have 2FA that's built into the Ignite platform. If you don't have it separately, we can do on-prem AD integration through the form there. And then also any SAML 2.0 single sign-on provider like Azure AD or Okta or uh, generic there. So a lot, of, a lot of business class features and capabilities here. And I talked a little bit about the sharing security. Uh, that's centralized. So we're not having to, to manage a whole bunch of different sharing settings. Uh, we can control links for the whole organization. We can also oversee links for the whole organization. And again, I'm logged in here as an administrator. So I can see all of the PT Corp file server links that anyone has created. There's that uh, client A folder link that Louise Finance created nine minutes ago. And if I see something in here that I don't like, or if a client accidentally shared something that they shared the wrong document or you know, client A instead of client B, they can come in, either I can come in and delete the link or they, they won't see the all tab. They'll just see links I've shared and they can come in and delete those links and sever access to that content. But what if, you know, what if it was out there for a day? We wanna know what did people do with it? Uh, Ignite also has a very robust auditing and reporting functionality. So I can come into reports and audit and file reports and say, you know, I can get detailed history of particular files and folders or user activity. And just some of the actions that Ignite audits, we can even tell if they previewed it via the link, whether or not they downloaded it. 
and then internally, uh, if people are deleting files, copying, moving, creating, just very robust audit uh, detail here, we can narrow it down on a folder or a file or a user, a particular user. And then uh, let's say they deleted a bunch of content and we need to get it back. Ignite also has centralized trash functionality. And that's down here. Now I'm an admin, so I can see all of the content that's been deleted in the platform by all the users. So I can see this was deleted by version control, Louise, me, and I'm able to interact with that deleted content. I can restore it or delete it permanently if I know it's not needed anymore. I can also give that restore ability to the users themselves. And I think um, this kind of touches a little bit on what Scott was saying that uh, they can look through the version control and if they deleted it on an accident, they can come in and restore their own content. So that relieves some pressure on help desk as well. Users are not able to delete permanently though. So if you have a, a user that gets upset, deletes all their content and walks out of the building on a Friday or something like that, you can just come in here, check the boxes and send it back. Of course, after dis disabling their user ID. And you can also see that I have some documents that are mentioned as under retention until 2028, 2021. That, is, that retention capability is coming from the other side of Ignite and it's called secure and govern or protect. Uh, we're in the middle of a name change, but uh, that retention, when a retention policy is on a document, even admins cannot delete it permanently until that retention policy has been released. Uh, let's see. So like Eric said, this is a, because this is software as a service, the provider and the client are not having to do hardware life cycles, patching servers, it relieves a little pressure on the RMMs. Uh, they're not having to manage multiple platforms and it really reduces the number of tools that the MSP has to use and the number of skill sets that they have to keep across their engineering tier or their help desk tier. And that standardization just helps, helps bring everything in and, and keep the margins tight and uh, service the clients better and faster. Well, like you said, you know, we're, it's an it, it's it's a one agent environment. You just deploy the agent. You you that takes away the need for the VPN, uh, and that also eases it up for the MSP who's got to deal with now the new work from home scenario. So mm -hmm. this this would work on that. This would this would integrate with the work from home scenario that a lot of our businesses are that we're dealing with or having to put up with. So this would this would mitigate a lot. Very nice. Yeah. And yeah. There, there is a small feature that I don't, I don't know for it, it's one of my favorite features mm -hmm. in Ignite. And that's the fact that when I share something with somebody and they open it up, I get notified by email. So I don't have to guess as to whether or not, you know, John has opened up a file that I sent him. I know because I've either gotten the email or I haven't. Uh, same thing with file requests. If you request files from other people, you'll get notifications when they actually upload that file. So it's really a kind of a process improvement. And it seems like just a, a simple little thing, but, but it saves me so much time. Mm -hmm. So I, I do have a question. Can you go back to where it was automatically listed the password there? Sure. So sharing a folder link. So the password right there. Is that mm -hmm. automatically randomly generated for the end user or? I... Yes. Okay. Okay. That's perfect. Yeah. So they don't have to come up with a crazy password. It, <laughs> it, it's automatically built into the system. As they go in, they just click a few boxes and it's done. And that would be a unique yes. password for each link. Yeah. And it also, it also warns them if they, you know, they can change that. But if okay. they're doing password one, two, three or something weak, uh, it's going to tell them kind of how strong their custom password is. So it generates okay. it for them, like you said, easy because they don't generate 
Uh, we all probably don't generate good passwords by default. Right. But it helps them to, it gives them that visual warning like, hey, by the way, this is not a great password to choose. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. And Eric touched on uh, request links. This is another great feature, super quick and easy to get content from outside. And you know, I, I recently used this on my personal Ignite account to get all of the uh, vacation photos from my family. <laughs> I sent out an Ignite link and I did create a separate folder for files received from each person. I sent that to everyone and my dad uploaded 80 gigabytes of pictures and it was Ooh. easy for him and easy for me to yeah. see who would sent content in. So, <laughs> and, and that create a separate folder for each user is, is really, really uh, just, it's, it's really important because that means you can create one link, send it out to 10 or 15 contributors. And when they upload, those uploads go into an individual folder named with their name. Mm hmm so yeah, it's very easy to know that they uploaded. What. Yeah. So I touched a little bit on governance. Eric, are we ready to switch over to the secure and govern side, the protect side? Yeah, I think so. Do you want to intro, intro that? Sure. Um, I mean, you know, we've touched on the, the whole get your files into the cloud and manage them and manage the permissions around them and then get all of those extra features because the data is now in the cloud, you can send links instead of attachments and the, you know, the secure ways that you can do that. But one of the things that, you know, is, I mean, every day we're hearing about new breaches, we're hearing about data being held hostage. And, you know, as MSPs, you know, we're used to securing the perimeter, right? Securing with firewalls. Um, we're used to securing the endpoint with, you know, antivirus or, or an EDR or, you know, uh, some type of application uh, monitoring. But at the end of the day, what we're really trying to do is protect the data. So we need to create these protections around the data, be monitoring the data um, for those types of risks, as well as being able to maintain compliances with things like GDPR, CCPA, HIPAA, all of the other, you know, acronyms that are out there that we all run into and are going to become more and more prevalent as smaller and smaller businesses find themselves having to comply with these regulations. And I, I think, you know, there's a lot of stories and, and I've talked about this. Uh, I talk about it in Ignite. I talk about it in the all things MSP realm as well, where we're talking about not only is governmental regulations on the horizon, but we're also seeing where insurance companies are starting to say, hey, we're paying out way too much in cybersecurity claims. We can't be doing this forever. So we're gonna need to tighten up what we will cover and what we won't cover. And that's going to drive a lot of these uh, data compliance things as well. And, and that's one of the things that, uh, Ignite has really focused on over the last couple of years and, and really dove into. But I think, again, where we make the user experience for that cloud file sharing and collaboration so easy and so the same as what they're used to in terms of an on-premise file server, we've done something very similar with Secure and Govern where you don't have to be a security expert to be able to use Secure and Govern. Um, it's, as you're going to see in just a few minutes, um, it's very easy to see what's going on. It's very easy to configure for certain types of compliances and even add very specific things that you want to look for. Um, and, and with that, I, I hope that's enough of a, an intro there for you, Philip, and, and I'll hand it yeah. off to you so you can really show us the cool stuff. Perfect. Yeah. Thank, thanks for that intro. Very good context. And I, I came from an enterprise world before I spent some years in MSP, and so I I saw the big the bigger dedicated governance department world and the small business trying to make it in a in a ransomware world, and so I really really appreciate what Secure and Govern does for kind of leveling that playing field between the two extremes. But let me jump right in. 
So Secure and Govern answers you know, what is in my environment, what content is in my environment. It also answers where it is, where that content is, and how it's being used. So the, you know, if a social security number is in the HR folder, that's probably not a big deal. But if a social security number is in Mike Manager's private folder or on the desktop of a, a user, that's a lot more of a concern. And so Ignite highlights where is my sensitive content and what are people doing with it? Is it being shared out? So here's a, a social security number or in the middle, it shows where the sensitive content is. On the right, it shows what the issue is. And I can see it's triggering against my PII policy as well as a CCPA policy. And I can click show detected content. I can see which document it is and even drill into the content and see a snippet of the content that it detected. Wow. And yeah, it, it gets you there quick. I mean, it, it used to, I used to run a SIM and it took so much effort to get to that level of detail. And, and I can move the files to a more appropriate location, delete them. So it gives me that you know, fingertip control to resolve that issue. And this is kind of honing in on sensitive content. The issues tab gives me a more global view and includes some other types of cybersecurity issues or governance issues. And one of them, this probable ransomware, I leave that unresolved so that I can show it, but that's always gonna be a severity nine. And then I have an external sharing link that includes sensitive content. So that red S means sensitive content, and that's an eight. And you can see just below it, I shared another doc, same folder, same permissions, same everything, but it's external sharing and it's a, a warning of three or sensitivity of, or severity of three, excuse me. So Ignite is looking at what your content is, where it is and how it's being used. And no human is having to figure that stuff out and add the context and say, okay, this is a bigger risk because it has sensitive content, even though it's in a common folder. So that it gives you a, a lot of visibility into your risk profile. And we also have a permissions browser, which, which gives you very quick and easy way to determine who has access to which folder. I can come into Louise Finance and switch it to a per user view. So show all permissions for Louise Finance. And I can see she has her private folder here. She has access to the HR folder, which has sensitive content. And maybe that's an error because she's in the finance and not HR. But it, it lets me do that kind of entitlement review. And we used to do it annually. And with Ignite, you can schedule these and export them. And it's just so fast and easy. I could easily see we have some clients who require quarterly entitlement reviews for permissions. And they're able to do that quickly and easily with Ignite. We have a compliance, uh, some compliance features here, subject access requests, our, our GDPR of the West, CCPA. And we can add a new SAR request with right to be forgotten, give it some details, and it will run that against the content in our environment. We can also support and assist clients who are doing a cybersecurity incident type of report. We can do a breach report um, based on breached users and a date range. Show me all their activity, everything they accessed between these two dates of when we think that would be. Yeah, and this is you know extremely critical when when you're having to deal with an incident, right? Because it can you know seriously narrow down how wide that breach goes. And you can have mm -hmm. that, that information right away. As soon as you know about the breach, you can come in here and you can find out exactly the extent of that breach. And that goes a long way when you're reporting the breach to know how serious it is, how many customers it affects, how many files it affected, you know, those kinds of things. Yeah. My, my brain naturally says, you know, what about what's outside of Ignite? Because we, we cover... In, in very good detail and capability what's inside Ignite. And we can see that, but what about the file server that hasn't migrated yet or the SharePoint site collection that we haven't pulled the content out of? 
Ignite Secure and Govern can also look into those other content sources and we can do on-prem with a Windows file server. We can add a bunch of different cloud sources as well and provide this same level of visibility into the, wherever your content is. Uh, we can add this governance capability. I, I think that's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah because, I could, sorry, Scott, go ahead. No, I, I, I agree. I think it's extremely incredible that you can not only within the Ignite platform, but also with the SharePoint and, uh, you know, you can even add cloud sources to that. This is beautiful. Yeah, because we understand that, you know, while, yes, we want you to put, you know, especially that data that's in that on-premise file server, we want you to move that to Ignite to make it more secure, make it easier to collaborate with outside people. But we know that there's going to be data in other places that you can't pull into Ignite, right? Or at least not right away and not without some, some more migration effort. And, and so, you know, that's why we want to go out there and be able to govern uh, those other data repositories as well so that we're not just saying, well, you have to keep it in Ignite or you can't protect it. No, we want to reach out to as many things as we can and be able to cover those with the governance piece so you know what your exposure is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I could I could talk about this all day for sure, um, <laughs> <laughs> and I would love to, but I want to leave room for Q and A. Um, oh, there is one more thing I want to show real quick uh, is just how quick and easy it is to add policies that we're checking against. So, to if I want to show me all the HIPAA data in my content and all the content governed by Ignite, it's checking that box. Or if I want to see, you know, New York Shield or uh, the Texas uh, regulation, I check that box, I hit save, I think it's 15 minutes later, it, it tells me because it's scanning for everything all the time. It's not like check HIPAA, come back in a week and we'll, you know, we will have reanalyzed all of your content. It's, it's a very quick, very easy way to get extraordinary levels of awareness into like classifying your content for regulations. So anyway, with that, I will take my hand off the mouse. <laughs> so <laughs> I've got a couple, Anthony, Scott. I, I've got a couple of questions in the live Facebook feed that we've got. So Mike, you <laughs> asked, does, does your platform allow for reverse cloud-based backups? Reverse cloud-based backups. So Sorry, what I do you mean by not... that? <laughs> yeah. Just, just curious. So I can probably provide a little bit of color to this um, because MSPs have asked me a lot about this. And, and so we're, we're doing some things to, to see what we can do about it. Um, the first thing we can do is we can create um, a sync of the data into a third-party repository. So we can use what we call the public cloud connector and we can sync that data into either Azure or AWS. Um, and, and the reason most MSPs have asked me about this is because they have some type of regulation or compliance or stipulation from their insurance company where they have to have a third-party backup that's separate from their you know, original storage location. Now, we've shown you how you can roll back your data. The chances of you ever needing a backup really with Ignite, slim none right? Because we can roll back, we have our own redundancies and all of that. Uh, but there's this checkbox that a lot of providers have to satisfy, and it has to be outside of Ignite. Um, so we do have the public cloud connector, so you can sync that data someplace else. Um, that's an option. Now, uh, that's not a true backup. It's a sync, but it's not a backup. You'd have to do something else within Azure or AWS to back that data up you know, use some type of functionality within there. Uh, I am talking to some other backup providers to see if they can work with our API to create that cloud-to-cloud -cloud backup, though, for you. And 
Samuel Sapp also asked, I, th I think we've already answered this and covered it, but uh, he, he asked, is it NTFS like or somehow syncs NTFS from on-prem? And then I think his second question also, uh, can it sync NTFS permissions? So I think we covered that, but if you want to touch on it one more time. Yeah, it's NTFS like. So that, that translation or migration happens when the content comes into the platform. And then once the content lives in the platform, it has the permissions that I showed there. It's we don't like cloud enable file servers. So your on-prem content repository would then be you know archived or not in use. Uh, so there's not really a sync that you would need to be going on in real time, but that at migration, it's gonna bring over your NTFS permissions. I hope that answers that. I think so. And I think that's all for the live Q&A that we've got today. Um, anything else uh, that y'all want to touch on about Ignite and uh, what, what, makes it, what makes it so beneficial for the MSP? Well, so for the MSP, you know, about two years ago, um, a lot of you out there will know Chip Beeler. Uh, he's been around the channel for quite a long time. And so he came on board here at Ignite to start building a sales organization uh, for partners. And because we see an opportunity, you know, and in order to enable or address the entire IT market, you have to be able to be talking to the internal IT departments, right, who manage all of their own IT. And you have to be able to talk to service providers who are managing the IT for all of those small to medium sized businesses that are out there, which are extremely important. And, and you can't address the entire market unless you're talking with both of those teams, right? The, the IT uh, departments, as well as your, your managed service providers. And so what we've done is we've started to build this program around managed service providers to be able to provide, you know, not only the product, you know, which we provide the product at a, you know, there's, there's margin there for you. Um, of course, you know, coming from a managed services background, um, you know, you're not going to sell, you're not going to resell Ignite, right? You're going to include Ignite as part of your package. And so markup of, of our prices is not really a thing because you're going to charge whatever you want because it's included within your, your package. I think Dave Sobel is the one who always says that uh, there's um, margin and mystery, I think is his term, uh, you know, where as long as you're bundling it and you're packaging it, you don't really have to worry about what we're giving you for margin, although there, there is room there. Um, but also more importantly is providing you with the resources, right? The marketing campaigns, the training around how to sell, deploy and administer Ignite. We just got that running in a brand new partner portal uh, for you guys. And, you know, as well as being able to do things like register your deals. We don't require you to register your deals. Uh, when it's most helpful is when you have a complex deal. You know, we talk about those life sciences deals uh, or those complex construction deals where you're going to want a subject matter expert. You're going to want a solutions engineer to come alongside and help you sell uh, to that client or that prospect. And, and that's where we want to register those deals so we can make sure that we're doing our due diligence alongside of you uh, to make that deal happen for you. Uh, so there's just a lot of things that we're doing as a partner program to help, you know, you leverage our resources in order to get Ignite into your clients. And I really think that those stories that I shared in the beginning, the, the file server replacement is a no-brainer. I mean, I, I, we're working on some very specific marketing right now uh, so that you can start showing clients where it's pretty much going to be a wash, whether you're managing an on-premise server and having to buy a VPN and pay for that month after month versus Ignite. And, and then of course, for you, the service provider, it's so much easier for you to you know, manage and maintain Ignite over an on-premise file server. You know, I, you know, how many of us have had to jump when a server went down? Pretty much all of us, right? So that just it simply doesn't happen. And so you don't have those issues when you move that data to the cloud with Ignite. Um, now, if you have any questions about this, we'd be glad to talk to you guys. Of course, uh, there's an MSP specific page. If you wanna just go check that out, 
It's uh, www.ignite.com forward slash MSP. Um, it's actually free to become a partner. You don't have to, you know, buy anything to sign up to be a partner. And when you sign up as a partner, that gives you access to the, the partner portal with all of the training, the marketing materials and, and the stuff like that. So you can start getting a real idea of what Ignite can do for you and for your clients. So I think that's, you know, hopefully that covers pretty much all of it. Um, Scott, I know, you know, you're still in the thick of this as an MSP. I've been out of, out of it for a couple of years on, on the vendor or dark side, um, like I like to call it. So is there anything <laughs> in particular that you see that you think from your point of view um, is interesting about Ignite or, or a question that you might have? Well, you know, I, I really like the governance, governance and compliance section as well. Uh, I like everything, but, you know, what stands out to me is going a step above and beyond. Uh, we're all, the industry is headed in that direction anyways with legislation, regulations. So whether or not you have a compliance, compliancy client on your hands, uh, their need to keep data in-house and keep it private and secure is still there. Um, I like I like that you know the MSP can go in and take care of things through that. I love the ransomware aspect of it. Uh, I mean, because let's face it, if a nation state is after you and you're targeted, then you know chances are they're going to get in. Uh, so if they want, they're going to knock on that door until it, it opens up eventually. So um, you know, I really like that aspect of it. That's really really nice. Uh, there's just so much. Uh, it, it's 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 a great platform. Um, is there any way that an MSP can uh, dive in and like uh, test drive it? They have like trials or anything like that? Absolutely. So when you sign up, when you register to become mm -hmm. a partner, you can go in and you can register for a trial and be able to use that trial and check it out and uh, meet with a solutions engineer to, to run through some maybe some use of cases or some proof of concept type situations uh, that you might want to check out. And, you know, you mentioned the compliance thing and small to medium sized businesses have kind of skirted the compliance thing up until now, right? And, and I love the Wayne Gretzky quote where he says, um, never skate to where the puck is, always skate to where the puck is going to be. And I think right now in the immediate future, that's where we need to be headed as MSPs. You need to be going where the puck's gonna be and the puck is going to be in that compliance, in that governance where every single small business is going to have some type of regulatory requirement or legislative requirement, or their insurance company is going to have requirements in order to insure them from a cyber cybersecurity risk. Absolutely. It's, it's definitely headed that direction for sure. So whether we are ready for it or not, it's here. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you know, uh, Mike Yoon, uh, he asked another question, but I'm pretty sure we you just answered that about five minutes ago. I'm not sure if this was touched upon, but I'm assuming Ignite allows for reselling. We've just gotten into that. So, Mike, check in, check, go, go back and uh, look, at the, uh, look at the video, and he'll, we'll answer that question completely. Eric does a great job of that. So if there's nothing else that you guys want to show me on this demo, I will wrap it up with everyone. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, yeah, it's been great. Thanks so much. Thanks. And we'll get the link sent out on our uh, IT Bog uh, YouTube channel as well. So we'll get that published out and sent over. Everyone have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.